Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Thief, Deadly Shadows, Thoughts. So, I suppose I will start with... I like that Garrett is instrumental to the plot. Again, I'm, I'm not going to spoil the first two in this one. I, I figure that the Forbidden Library is where the Keepers store their adult material. The the Keeper Decoder Rings, that, that had me chuckling. I find that I share Garrett's exasperation with having to steal some of the same items twice. I do like that you meet the eye. Again, sort of, I'm, I'm not going to give away the, the game itself points out that they have a bit of a connection. At first I thought that it was, uh, you know, there was some wasted potential there because it didn't say an awful lot at first, but then you get into the, you know, one, once you get to the, well, once you leave the museum, and you're headed towards where you place it and such. It does have some good comments that, that stick with you. Yeah. Now, I found that the stone people and gargoyles thing coming alive, that was a pretty decent idea. You know, you have all these gargoyles in keeper areas, and yeah, suddenly the hag brings them to life. And, you know, you can, at, at first you can just destroy them with, like, a fire arrow and they'll crumble into dust. And then later, of course, they... I appreciate that, it did, that I didn't have to avoid knocking any of them out for the rest of the game. But the fact that I can just do it with the blackjack, I get it. It's magic. I don't have to explain it, but it's still kind of silly. Near the end, when you you know you're placing the artifacts, I really do appreciate that it's not a boss fight or something like that. They still you know, it's a stealth game. You're never forced to fight. I really appreciate that. At no point does the game really force you to stand and fight. You can always sneak and you, you know, if discovered you can often run away. And I also like that if she discovers you, there's not a lot, you know, from what I recall at least, flash bombs do not affect her. So uh, yeah, I, I like that. Now, yes, when, when you, you know, when you're running around placing artifacts, when I got to the docks, I noticed that, and I, I hadn't checked for the, the, what was it, the something gale, the abysmal gale for a while, but it was definitely not there when I got there at the end of the game, and I mean, we knew it was a ghost ship, so I guess it's somewhere up in the sky at the end of the game. I get that the reason they have you explore the city is that they're doing the Deus Ex thing of you return to an area that you are. I'm not going to be spoiling the Deus Ex games either, but you return to an area that you've that has been neutral, maybe even good for you, and suddenly it's completely changed tone. You know, you have to suddenly. Yeah, yeah. I can't really go into more detail without. Spawning things about Deus Ex, but 
I appreciate that that's what they were doing. Still going to say that exploring the city, you know, open world style here does not fit Thief, does fit Deus Ex, but I went into that in the review. And I suppose that one of us covers the city. I do think that it was decent enough that we, you know, we get some backstory about the city and that plays into this whole final glyph thing. The the hag herself, certainly she is a big threat because again, you know, she's powerful and I'm pretty sure you can't flash bomb her. Excuse me. She does, of course, also, I'm not sure if this was like intentionally in order to guide you, but she's always standing very close to where you have to place the artifact. And it makes sense because she's guarding the area, but at the same time, it's very, okay, I have a basic idea of where I'm supposed to go, but let's see, check out an area. Oh, there's the hang. That's it, you know. Yeah, that. In too many respects, the game holds your hand. Now, I suppose that more or less covers. I did think that the 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 reveal on. You know, I, I like the, the gradual build-up. In, in one of the first cutscenes, you see a keeper hide the truth. I guess a, I guess one of the scribes, I guess maybe that was the, that was Gamal in disguise. I do find that when Gamal showed up disguised as Artemis, you knew that that was Artemis. You knew that that was Gamal, rather, right from the start. And it's like, okay, Garrett, catch up, can catch on, and then Orlin shows up, and and it's like, it's almost like a comedy routine. You know, you're just waiting for the bad guy to reveal himself, and the the good guy is being completely moronic about it. It's like, look, Orland, can we do this another time, another place? No, you're right. This is the right time, the right place. Orland, you were right. No, I was wrong. You were right. It's just like, oh man, this this does not fit. And then you know, shedding the skin. I'm sorry, total inconsistency. Total, total inconsistency there is is what I'm getting at. And I'm also not entirely sure. Does that mean that Gamal actually found and stripped Artemis of his skin after you met Artemis in the you know Gamal's little library area with the final cliff map thing? I mean, she works fast. I didn't think that. I don't know, and it's also just really, it doesn't add a lot. I feel like if if that had happened sooner, and maybe Gamal also, I mean, obviously Gamal isn't Artemis in disguise when, you know, when Garrett meets Artemis in the, you know, and, and spots the, the final glyph thing, because Gamal would just have killed Garrett, or at least, you know, done, done something. Certainly not, you know, clued, Garrett in on, on the final plan where you know Garrett and Artemis kind of figure it out together. So yeah. Now I do I thought the, the you know some keepers splintering off was a decent enough idea and it really highlights, you know, things were going wrong for the, the keepers is you know is it still about maintaining balance and such? I really did resent when Artemis was like, I can't believe my brethren would still use subterfuge at a time that you know would still you know hide the truth from Garrett and such. And it's like, oh, finally they're actually using subterfuge and and guiding and such. And it's just, yeah. Anyway, and he complains about. It. Anyway, now the ending itself, I guess basically the keepers may have to start over or something. You know, all the, the text that they had gathered is gone. And it's like, what would become of the city now? And, you know, in part, it's, 
it's a, an interesting note to end a trilogy on to say, you know, the future is uncertain. I mean, the the it was always kind of, you know, these games were not about closed endings. The not going to spoil, but yeah, and there is a sort of hint towards something might go, you know, yeah, w what will happen? There's so so that's a a good note for for that. Now, on the so yes, I, I guess Garrett himself becomes a keeper of the thing. That is, I figure Looking Glass had probably written that, and it was like you know something Armstrong. So well, I do. I love Armstrong's work, especially when it's Deus Ex. But I I figured that was but but yeah, that's a really good book ending of the not a spoiler, but in the first one of the first things you hear is. You have skill. Not everyone can sneak up on a keeper, especially one who doesn't want to be snuck up on like something like that. snuck up with. Yeah, that was that was a kind of cool little. Yeah, I I do think that it's it doesn't make perfect sense that Garrett would really become more involved with. In, I don't know, I guess maybe they're saying that he was gradually becoming more important or more more intentionally helping and keeping the balance and such. I don't know. I, I still don't completely see it, but maybe it's just the first step on our journey, or one of the first steps. Maybe it's saying down the line he will become a keeper and he will be a great keeper the way Artemis was. And Artemis, as we know, is now literally a bag of skin. And I I did rather like the reveal with the clock tower pointing at you know at first you think it's Orland and it's like He's kind of an obvious red right? when you really stop and think about it. But I will say I had not I didn't realize it would be the hag, I didn't realize it would be a different keeper than Orland. And the the whole skin stealing thing did not see it coming when when really, I mean, the hints were there. The the what is it? Transmutation, transformation, glyph thing, and yeah. Mentioned fairly early on, if I recall. So, so yeah. And the thing about you know books are disappearing from the keeper library. Yeah, it's the, the hints are there. But but yeah, the clock tower pointing at, and you think it's maybe like Orland, but really it's also pointing at what was it the the area that Kanika was sleeping in, something like that, and and where the mall near. Which again, you realize when you're in the keeper compound, you can see that their two areas are close to each other. So, yeah, that was, yeah. Now I suppose that more or less covers. And and Kanika being murdered was a cool enough, you know. And and you do see you sort of see her her skin being partially. That is one of the most disturbing things I saw in this game. Not the most, but I'll, I'm getting to that in a second. Just to briefly cover the the Silent Hill level, it certainly does tie well into the story, and it's well done. It's just it's Silent Hill. It's it's not Thief at all. But yeah, the I will say that the whole thing of you know Katika is murdered. I mean, at first we think it's Roland, but then we find out it's Gamal. Still, the villain who's undercovering the good guy organization, who then you know kills the kills the one who was about to discover them. 
or ever reveal them and frames it on the protagonist. That's a pretty old, you know, that's, that's something of a cliche. So that's, that particular twist was not their best work. And that brings me to Gamal. Actually, just briefly, I do want to... This is one of those stealth games where you've been meticulous in avoiding bodies being found, avoiding killing anyone, and then at the end of the game, of course, bodies are being found, and, like, you know, you're trying to sneak around, and the guards might be looking for, you know, perhaps one of the stone golems, or maybe the... Maybe there's fighting between the pagans and the Hammerites, you know, various things, and the, you know, a civilian might be running around, guards, come here, and I'm like, how did he see me? Did he see me? And it was actually a body, but the guard bumps into me, and now I gotta deal with it. You know, that's really irritating. And, yeah, not the only stealth game that happens. It bothers me every time I discover that a stealth game is is doing that. I do think that it was kind of cool after all this stuff of the, you know, your allies might fight, fight on your behalf or you'll have more to fight if they're hostile towards you. You know, near the end when, when the keeper enforcers come after you, you know, you might be protected by allies or can maybe City Watch also fight the enforcers? I'm, I'm, yeah, fighting varies. And, you know, then that takes the burden off you. But then at the very end, you know, in addition to that, that in itself is kind of cool. But then at the end, it's the gargoyles and, and Gamal herself. And it's like, they're not going to win. You know, the, the sooner I'm, you know, doing the, you know, the sooner I accomplish the artifacts, the less people are going to die, you know, and, and, yeah. And I do think Gamal showing up in person in-game, it is kind of a cool model. But then, you know, I was looking at it for a few seconds, and I was like, that's really cool. And then she blinks, and she starts walking, and she's basically moving around, and it's like, Wow, it's just it's it's too similar to the others. It yeah. And I suppose so Gamal herself, I like the reveal. I do think that, you know, she's looking very the thing. I do think that we should have seen a little bit more transformation. And you know, obviously that's not quite what the cutscenes were, you know, they, they don't want to show too much and certainly don't want to show too much action, that's not the idea, but they are also still, you know, things are too well lit and you don't have enough silhouette and good use of silhouette going on, like in the first two, yeah, it, now, I suppose that might... Well, let's cover that. Now, Gamal herself, I guess her no time was something like that she wanted to live forever and she wanted to be all-powerful. I just think it's it's a bit, you know, it's a bit obvious, of course, and it really doesn't go to any kind of deeper... I don't know, maybe it does. Maybe it is some sort of perversion of, you know, if I can live forever and be all-powerful, then the Keepers will have a better chance. Maybe. It just didn't quite feel that way to me, where in the first two, the end game is perfectly just, like, it is, you're never going to forget why the the villain is doing it and the, the, and the exact plan they have, and just how it all makes sense in a warped sort of way in their mind, because it, it follows that extreme that they're 
representing it. And that's obviously all I can say for that. Going into spoilers. And I suppose that pretty much covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.